Hey Stub Clubbers and welcome back. Many of you may have noticed that our name has changed so I just wanted to give a reminder about that. We went from the Stub Club to now Stub Club Entertainment. So make sure that you are still on Facebook with us, Instagram and Twitter because all of our accounts are the same. We just changed the name. going to be talking about some fun facts from Mary Poppins Returns and hopefully you guys caught my last video talking all about the review of the film and also talking about a little bit of my thoughts and also talking about a little bit of my thoughts and opinions on the film but right now we're gonna focus all on different movie facts from the film for starters in the film we see our Mary Poppins not the same Mary Poppins as the first one of course we have Emily Blunt coming in as Mary Poppins and we see her being more strict and not so Julie Andrewish, as many of you might say. Blunt had to deal with the intimidation factor. It is an iconic character played by somebody as iconic as Julie Andrews. And so how do I do my version of her, you know? Now, did you go back and look at that first film when you got cast? I actually did the opposite. Instead, I dove into the book, and she's quite different in the books. She's completely eccentric and so rude. My goodness, Annabelle. What have you done to your clothes? You could grow a garden in that much soil. Deliciously rude and vain. Peel Travers is the one who gave Walt Disney a very hard time with making the first one, and it almost didn't happen. It took many, many years, and a lot of struggle and stuff going on back and forth just to get that movie all situated and to get that movie rolling and to have it the Mary Poppins that we know today. Um, Walt Disney. The world premiere of a one-of-a-kind pull-out-all-the-stops motion picture. They tell me this could be one of your biggest pictures, Mr. Disney. Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins, Dick Van Dyke. To me, this is the greatest family classic of all time. To show some homage from the original Mary Poppins film, what they did is they have Emily Blunt looking in a mirror, and we have Mary Poppins' reflection back. And as Mary Poppins walks away, we have Mary Poppins still in the mirror looking right in her direction. And that was done to show some honor to the original filmmakers from the 1964 Mary Poppins. I want to make sure I definitely touch upon the animation with live action in this film. It was so amazing that we got to see 2D animation again. And honestly, I will take 2D animation any day over CGI. That's just me. But it's very interesting of what had to happen then at the Walt Disney Company while making Mary Poppins Returns. For many, many years now, we've had CGI animation in the Walt Disney Company. So when it came time to them saying, okay, we're gonna do Mary Poppins Returns, bring in that 2D animation to bring the classic Exceed to Life, they didn't have many or possibly no 2D animators left in the Walt Disney Animation Company. So what they actually had to do is they had to go out and get some alumni and bring them back. Some of them possibly were still with the company. Some of them actually did come out of retirement just to do this film. They wanted to honor the legacy of the first film and also to keep it, yes, just super entertaining. And I gather that meant penguins. Right. But these penguins kick it up a notch. What's kind of cool about our penguins is they actually have a little more personality. And he's got this nice suave killer expression on his face because he's a smoothie. And in the spirit of the first film, there's plenty of song and dance in the sequence with real red-blooded, living, breathing actors as foils. So now since the Disney studio is all based with CGI animation, the director of the film actually had to go out looking for many 2D animation artists. And one of those was actually the head lead animator for Belle during Beauty and the Beast, and that was James Baxter. So he actually came back to work on this film to get going again with 2D animation, which he said that's where he started off, and he was so happy to do that again. And that's what also happened with many alumni. With the animation feature, it actually took 16 months to complete. 
So that's going to be working with the animation drawers, working with the live action actors for them to understand where they have to do everything and put everything together. Here's actually a fun fact. It takes 1,440 separate drawings just to complete one minute of that animation scene. That's a lot of hand drawing right there. <laughs> So that's exactly why it took 16 months just to complete that. <laughs> Something that is also really cool actually comes into the play with the costumes for all of our real actors and actresses. If you looked really closely, you would see that all of the costumes that the, the actors and actresses are wearing, it looks like they are part of the animated feature. And this is done by the costume designers actually painted right on top of their clothing to make it look like they are wearing a painted dress to go in with the, all of the animated characters. So I thought that was a little bit cool right there that they just didn't have them wearing regular clothes like in the original Mary Poppins. They made their costumes look like they were part of it as well. When Mary Poppins first comes in at the beginning of the film, you will see that she's wearing her hat sideways and there's actually a robin right on there. That is going to show a little bit of homage to the original Mary Poppins. If you remember during A Spoonful of Sugar, she is singing to a robin, which was an animatronic, if some of you did not know that. And they actually got the robin wrong. So in the original Mary Poppins, I believe it is said that they use an American robin. So when it came time to making the hat with the costume designer, they made sure that they got the correct Robin for being over in England for the film. And so that is why they also have the Robin on top of there to show a little bit of a correction and then also to show homage to the original. Of course, we all see that the talking parrot umbrella does come back. In the first one, it is all animatronic that we don't see it talk till the very end. This one we see the parrot talking many times throughout it. We will see that there is a color change. It was more of a green, blues, and whites in the original on the umbrella. And this time coming in, we have it as a more of a bronze and a brown color. I'm not sure if it was an animatronic. There's a chance it could have been that or just CGI the whole film. Just as I discussed in the first video all about the review of Mary Poppins Returns, we see the kite coming back in for Let's Go Fly a Kite. Not only do we have the kite, we have the kite's tail connected, which is the vote for women sash that we see Mrs. Banks wearing in the original film. But we also see many other objects in the attic. We see all of the letter blocks that was from the nursery scene with Jane. And then we also see the snow globe that now has no water in it that is going to be from when they were singing with the birds. There's something that many people online have been talking about that that snow globe should not have actually been in the attic. In the original film, Mary Poppins actually takes the snow globe, puts it in her bag before she leaves. But somehow, magically now, we have the snow globe in Michael's attic with it empty. So is it that Mary Poppins just came up put that back? Or is that a little detail that the movie makers did not notice? I'm not sure. The song, Can You Imagine That, is actually showing um, a little bit of a throwback to a song that was in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. The song was called The Beautiful Brimey, and the reason why they are showing trademark to that in the film is that even though it was from Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, that song was originally written for Mary Poppins that was cut from the film and never in it. So what they did was they put in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. It was an underwater scene where we have live action and animation. We then have Mr. Banks from Mary Poppins in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Angela Lansbury that also played a guest appearance towards the end of the movie in Mary Poppins Returns as the Balloon Lady. And so the reason why I'm talking about the Bed Knobs and Broomsticks scene with Beautiful Brimey is because Can You Imagine That is an underwater scene. And all of that from when they go in the bathtub and go underneath, that is showing off a homage to that scene from Bed Knobs and Broomsticks that had some of our Mary Poppins cast and a song that was originally cut from the Mary Poppins film. Many of us were a little bit disappointed that Julie Andrews was not in this film. Yes, we had Dick Van Dyke come back, we had, we had Karen Dotrice would come in, but we did not have Julie Andrews. And that's because she actually wanted to take a step back from this and have Emily Blunt shine as Mary Poppins. 
We did not see a special guest appearance from the boy who played Michael, and that is because the boy who played Michael in Mary Poppins, the first movie, actually passed away when he was only in his early 20s, I believe 21, and he sadly passed away from some type of a disease or sickness that he caught while going over to another country. So unfortunately we could not see him in that film and Karen Dotrice was a little sad herself that she wasn't able to share any screen time with him. Many of you might not know this but the Mary Poppins book that the original is based off of and this movie is not just a single book. P.L. Travers actually wrote a series of books and that is where Mary Poppins Return comes from. There are many books, I want to say about two or three, that were combined into making this film. If none of you have read P.L. Travers books before with Mary Poppins, maybe it's a good idea to do that because there are a lot of different things that come from those books, like titles of chapters, different scenes from all these different books and that were combined for Mary Poppins, especially Mary Poppins Returns. There is one of the books from Mary Poppins, the book series, that is called Mary Poppins Opens the Door. And that is the reference to what happens at the end of the movie, where they say Mary Poppins is not going to leave until the door opens. And that is something that did happen at the end of the film, and that is coming from one of the Mary Poppins books. When Mary Poppins first comes into 17 Cherry Tree Lane at the beginning of Mary Poppins Returns, you will notice that Michael and Jane have the same reactions that they did when they saw Mary Poppins in the original film. Mary Poppins! Oh, close your mouth, please, Michael. We are still not a codfish. Close your mouth, please, Michael. We are not a codfish. <laughs> Jane Banks. Still rather inclined to giggle, I see. <laughs> now you, Jane. <laughs> rather inclined to giggle doesn't put things away. I hope all of you learned a little bit of some fun facts about the film. If there's anything that I did forget that you learned from somewhere or you noticed during the film, how about you comment below so we can have a discussion about it. Thank you all for watching and I hope you go out and see Mary Poppins Returns because it's definitely worth it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.